Eclipse shuttle has to be one of the coolest paper airplanes that I have ever designed. Just look at the engines at the back of this plane. I absolutely love the way those turned out. And this is all origami, locking tension into the paper to hold those engines in that shape. There's no cutting or taping required for this plane. And of course, it looks awesome when folded from this metallic paper, but it'll look great using your regular paper that you have at home. But it will look even better if you support me on Patreon and download and print off the template to fold one that looks like this. And I have to say, I think this is also one of my best templates. For just $4 a month, you'd gain access to this template as well as 90 others. So be sure to head over there and check that out. Now, the last thing I want to say before we get folding is that this is an expert level plane. So if you don't have a lot of experience in origami, I recommend trying a different plane. And if you do try this one, be prepared for a real challenge. Foldable Flight is racing towards 500,000 subscribers, and I want to thank each and every one of you for supporting this channel over the last five years. Now, actually, most of you watching this video are not subscribed. I think only like eight and a half percent of you are. So this is just a chance to say, if you enjoy the content that we're making, please click that subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed, please click the bell notification icon. Now, I would really like to hit that 500,000 milestone, and I'd like to do it by March 18th. That is my birthday, and I'm willing to work with you a little bit. I know that's an ambitious goal, but whenever we reach 500,000 subscribers, I'm going to release templates for these five planes for free. And I'm hoping, as I give you some free stuff, that you're willing to work with me and try to accelerate our rate of subscriptions. Now, I'm telling you, if every person watching this video subscribes, we'll get there. If half the people watching this video subscribe, we will get there. So let's make it happen. And with all that said, let's see this plane in flight and then I'll teach you how to fold it. Three, two, one, go. Get you know All you'll need in order to fold this plane is a sheet of square paper. I'm using some thin kami here, but you could use something a little thicker than that. And you're going to want to begin with your colored side up if you have paper like I do that is two-sided. You might also find that a pen is useful for this to make a few uh, reference creases a little more clear, but they are not necessary. So if you don't have one on hand, that's fine too. And we're going to begin now just by folding the paper in half, just like this. And then we'll open it up. And we're actually going to fold it in half this way too. I'll now flip it over and fold the top edge here to that horizontal crease I have. And now I'm going to flip it back over and pull this crease here to that horizontal crease to place a crease that goes right between them. If you find it a little easier, you can fold that down once you have the crease approximately placed. Increase it just like that. And now again, we're going to fold this plane on that crease. And then finally I'll flip it over and pull this middle crease between those points, this middle crease here to this. And I don't have to crease all the way across here. Once I land that on that bottom horizontal crease there, or not the bottom one, the second from the bottom, you can kind of just crease this section right here and that will serve as a reference for us. So it should look like that. And now I'm going to fold this section down. I'll fold it in half, right like this. And we're going to look at this front section here and I am going to use my pen here to highlight we're looking at a couple creases. 
So we have these three creases that are close together. You're going to ignore the first one. And we're looking at the second one here as we fold a little triangle and we want this to land along that crease. And it is important that you're landing this on that kind of middle one of the three creases. Just like that. And then you're going to crease from this point here to this back of those three creases. Right like that. And then with this folded over in this position, we're now going to flip it into this position here and pull this down and we're going to make a crease that starts right here and goes all the way to the back. And we want this to be parallel to the center crease and perpendicular to our back edge. So really focus on this and land it along the edge that's right behind it to make sure that you have this line oriented correctly. And we can unfold this now, rotate it into this position, and now fold this to land there to get the same crease on the other side of our paper. Make sure your corners line up. Okay, and we can open the paper up and you can see it should look like this. I'll flip it over, unfold this. And now I want you to look at this point here, which is at the intersection of, from this orientation, the top horizontal crease and one of the your outer vertical line. And I'm going to fold this corner back here to land right on that point. And I'm going to crease almost all the way, but you can see, if you look closely at your own, you're going to hit the center crease just before the top edge of the paper. And you should, if you want your plane to look as nice as possible, stop your crease right there. I'm now going to go ahead and reverse my whole center crease here, just like that, and fold into this position here and allow you can see that to wrap around. So I'm not creasing all the way and I can pull this side to land right along the other side here. Here's the same intersection on this side. So I can kind of pull this crease to that point, but then I'm going to make sure that my edge here is landing right along the crease that's behind it. Okay, so your plane should look like this. And now I'm going to unfold back to here, flip it over. And I want to make a crease that runs right from this point here to this point there. And it does not go all the way across the paper. Just creasing right in that section. And really what I need is this reference right here where I'm marking where that edge lands on the center crease. So you can see where that crease is. That gives me this reference point, which you could tack with your thumb, but again, this is why I prefer to have a pen. And now we're going to collapse the paper back into this position here. And we now have that reference. I'll highlight here as I pull this down, I'll highlight, we've got a crease right on the other side of the paper. It's the same crease as is right here. And basically, there are two points I want to pay attention to here as I fold this. So first is you can see we've got this little short edge to what's going to be our tail fin. I want to land the front of that right along this layer. And then the other thing that I will use as a reference is I want this, the edge of this crease to be straight up directly above that reference point. And of course, that's a slight judgment there, but anything really close to it is going to be fine. 
and that gives you your crease right there. Okay, now I will open just this side here and I want to take this crease here and it's going to end up landing on my center crease. So you can see I've got a mountain crease right there. I want that to land on my center crease. So I'm lining it right up with my center crease. The crease needs to go right back to this point right here. And that's how I decide exactly where to crease this layer that's right behind that. And once I do one, now I can reverse the center crease into a mountain fold and I can kind of pull this into position and fold this side to match the first side. And again, I'm looking right at this and landing it on the edge behind it as well as paying attention to where this crease is landing which again should be right along my center crease. Keeping this plane perfectly symmetrical is a bit of a challenge, but it is possible. Okay, and we'll then open this up and I want to fold the portion of this point right here that goes beyond the back edge here, up just like this. So it goes just inside, just like that. And now we have a beloved sink fold. So I'm going to kind of open this up, push, and you can see we've got that outer triangle of those. We're going to make all of the outside creases mountain folds and all of these inside diagonal creases valley folds. And you can kind of gently massage it into this position here where it all sinks inside just like that. And now we can press everything nice and flat. And again, you can see how that's looking on the back. Okay, so now we can put it in this position right here. And let's see, I'll rotate it into this position. I'm going to continue this crease, but not all the way to the back edge. I literally just want to make a little pinch crease right where this edge intersects this crease. So I can kind of feel that there. I just made a little pinch crease right there. And I'll do the same thing on this side. just like that. And now I'm opening the paper all the way back up here, even with the sink fold. The creases are in the correct orientation now, but we can even open that up. And I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to make a little mark right here where that pinch crease is, right here. It's where the pinch crease intersects that diagonal line. And we're going to make a few other references that we'll use here in just a second. So I'm taking this edge here, and I'm folding it down to this crease right here. And again, I'm just gonna make a little pinch crease this time. My pinch crease will be along the back edge and you can see I'm hitting the high point of that crease as I make my little pinch crease there. Rotate it, do the same thing over here. So I'm looking for this crease. And where that crease intersects the back edge is where I land my corner. Make just a little pinch crease. And now we have a little weird step. Let me go ahead and highlight those pinch creases because we'll need them in just a second. Okay, for this step, we are now looking at this diagonal crease. And where this edge intersects with this point here. So you can see that point is where this crease intersects that diagonal. And I'm taking this, landing this crease along, not the center crease, but this top crease. And landing this edge simultaneously right on that point. And again, I'm just making a little pinch crease. Lots of little reference creases here. I know it's a little tedious, 
but the end result's well worth it. And that's going to be a crease that we use here in just a second to make our engines in the back. And we'll do the same thing over here. So I'm looking at this diagonal crease and this point right here. And I land that diagonal crease on my top horizontal line. And then I just make a little pinch crease at the back. Okay, so now I basically need to make creases connecting these points. Um, this will be the front of the engine and this will be the back of the engine. So I flip it over. We'll look here at these top references. I'm swinging it here. I'll swing it, exaggerate it. So basically I want to fold from that little dot I have to that pinch crease there. And I'm only placing my crease between those two points. I do not crease the full length of the paper here. So you can see right where that crease went, if I flip it over from that point to where that pinch crease intersects the back edge. And now I'm gonna fold from that point to this point here. So you can see on this side exactly what I've done. And I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side now. Folding from that front point to each of my back pinch creases. Okay, so it should look like this. If I flip it over, you might be able to see the creases more easily. Looks like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and collapse it back into this position right here. I'll leave my sink fold undone for the moment. And I now want to make a crease where I'm kind of swiveling this you can see this is a valley crease. I'm swiveling and I want my crease to run right to this point, this intersection of the two creases that make the thruster. And then I'm landing this existing crease right on this edge here. And my crease needs to go right to this point where these creases are all intersecting. Try really hard to be accurate with this step. Okay. And I'll then unfold that and just pop that in reverse. And I'll position the paper now like this. And just continue that crease all the way up like this. flip it over and fold this corner to land right there. And make sure that this crease goes right through that intersection of all those other creases. But you're basically just folding this side to match the first side. Okay, and we can go ahead now, reassert your sink fold there, and then push it all flat 
so that we're making a crease right on the center crease on either side of this fin. Just like that. And now with the paper flipped over, we can fold this to that horizontal crease there. Straight across. Flip the paper over. And now fold this edge to land right along this diagonal crease you have. Not the one that runs at 45 degrees, but the one that goes straight to the top edge of the paper. So basically I'm folding this, so this goes right to my center crease. And I'm landing this edge just wide of that crease we have there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. If you want to check your symmetry, you can of course fold it in half and actually make sure that you got your two sides exactly the same. And now we'll fold this top section down along this crease we have here. It's just a horizontal crease. Try to control your layers as you do this. And it should look like this, where you have a pocket right at the front edge of your plane. And I'm going to go ahead now, and on one of these sides, I'm going to fold this edge to land right along the edge of my top layer. And then I find for this, you really do need to match up your two sides by folding it in half. And then folding this to line up with your other side. Just like that. And I'll open it back into this position. And now I've got, again, this angle here, the sharper angle that starts right at the top and goes lower than this diagonal here. And I'm basically folding this top edge. I'm pulling it right to that diagonal and I'm just creasing to the center like that. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Just creasing to the center. And now, let's see. Now we are going to push this fin to one side, put it in this orientation here, and we're going to do a little collapse here. So I need to fold, I'm going to make a crease that starts right at this point here where this crease is intersecting the front edge. And as I pull this, let me actually fold that down for a second because we're going to look at this point as our reference. And then this, if you're looking from the top, is our top horizontal crease. So I'm folding right from this point here. And the layers are a little thick there, so you might have to kind of roll it. And I'm landing this point, the change of angle, right on that top horizontal crease. And then I'm creasing part way back, but not all the way back. And I kind of even have to reach into this pocket and continue the crease on this layer in the pocket. But I'm not creasing this top layer because what happens with this top layer is I kind of fan it open and you can see that's opening this pocket in here. And as I fan that open, I want to land this little elbow. You can see we've got this point here, which we can move as we swing this forward or backwards. We can move that little elbow right there. And we want to land that elbow halfway between this crease and this parallel crease. So we're looking, and this is just an eyeball estimation, of course, but we're trying to land it right in between those two points, equidistant from those two lines and your estimation will be just as good as mine. And once you do that, you crease this inside portion of the pocket, and then you can crease that as well. Then go ahead and you can swing that forward again, and we're creasing now from this point here 
to right there, just kind of swinging this open at its limits. And then you can gently flatten that all out towards the back, just like that. And you can see we've got a bunch of extra layers, but that's basically set. This will be the nose of the plane right here and the angle change in the wing toward the back. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And in order to do that, we're going to need to fold it in half this way. And we're going to fold this side to match by, again, we're looking at this point right here where this crease intersects the nose. And we're going to start pulling it over and we want to land this new crease we make right along that edge behind it. And then you continue the crease into the pocket here on this layer that's inside the pocket. And then we fan this open. As we fan this open, we try to land this side that's kind of bubbling right along this edge. Try holding everything as flat as you can as far as this and this are concerned as you're lining everything up. Otherwise, you may end up with some asymmetry that you don't foresee. And already my... My two wings are not quite symmetrical, but they'll be close enough that it should fly just fine. Okay, and once I've done that, I can then flatten this whole section to try to land it on this section. And my crease should go right from this point to that point there. And then I can gently lie everything flat and just push that slack out to the back. Okay, and if I open this up, it will look like this. Now we've got another tricky step. You can see if you kind of lift this open, you've got a point where all these layers meet right there. And I'm going to start a crease that goes right to this point in here that point right there. And then I'm landing this little corner right there, that tiny little corner right on the center crease. You don't want to pull too far that this crease goes off the corner. That can make a little bit of a mess. So make sure that crease just goes right to that corner in there. And then you can gently fold right there and close this up, taking all that slack out as you do so. And lying it flat like this. We'll do the same thing over here. So I'm opening it up, finding that point right there and starting my crease at that point in there. And then I'm landing this short little corner right on the center crease as close to it as I can. And I'll do a nice sharp crease again, going right to that point there. And then I can fold right on that little crease there. And then gently, I'm trying to keep everything landing on the existing creases. And I pull that bubble that's in there forward and push all the slack out in that direction for that little bubble that's under these other layers as I'm creasing it. Okay, your plane should now look like this, and we are ready to work on this layer here. And I'm going to make a crease that goes from this point, the outer point of the wing there, into the point of the pocket. So to do that, I kind of just pull this forward, start my crease right there, and it's going right to that point there. And then that means that I'm going to create a crease that runs all the way to the front of these layers on this side. And 
And now I can fold my plane in half again, just like this, and fold this side to match. So I'm going to open this whole pocket up. I'm creasing from this point to that point there as I swing everything open. And I'm trying to line this all up with the layers I have on the other side, but keep in mind, again, perfect symmetry is very hard with this plane and you will want your paper to lie flat. So kind of follow the guidance of the paper as well. If it's telling you, I can't lie flat in that position, then just listen to it. And it should look basically like this. And this is the nose, this is the tail. Uh, let me rotate it into this position here. And now you'll see, again, here's the wing crease, or the leading edge of the wing. We are going to be pulling this forward and there's a little place it's gonna catch right there. And I'm going to crease right through that point there, that elbow, to this point here. So I'm just kind of gently curling. It's hard to get it right to this corner. Try as hard as you can to get it right to that corner and right through that point and make sure as much as you can it's a straight crease. And that defines the angle and you'll just continue it all the way to the edge of that layer. Flip it over, do the same thing on this side and you can see that little edge there will tell you the angle of your other one. So try if you can to get this one at exactly the same angle. Again, right through this little elbow in here and right to that corner. and it should look like that. And now we have another sink fold. So this flap needs to be uh, sink folded where this point will end up flipping inside out in this pocket and point in this direction. So I'm gonna open it up just enough and it's gonna be really messy for a second, but I promise you're gonna be able to do this if you just practice a little bit. You're going to literally press right on that point with conviction and force it all the way through just like that, and you're going to fold one edge of the pocket should be this crease right here, and one edge of the pocket will be the crease on the other side. So look, I'm just looking for the existing creases as I kind of begin flattening this again. I don't wanna make any new creases there. I'm just allowing the paper to collapse back into a comfortable position on the existing creases. I can flatten that just like that. And no, it's not totally flat there. But then I can swing this down just like that. And then flatten this by going from this point here to that point there. Just like that. Now this is basically what you're doing, but I'm going to open that up just enough to show you before you uh, leave this whole section alone, you're also going to want to fold this edge here to there. And that's just going to strengthen your wing a bit by adding more layers here. And now when you fold that back, that's going to be a reinforced wing and it can all collapse just like that. Okay, we gotta do the same thing on the other side. So, again, with conviction, we're going to open this up just a little bit and I'm going to force that point all the way through as far as it'll go. And then, without making any new creases, I'm just massaging the paper back into a flat position using the existing creases. And you might find Using your pen can help sharpen that point. Just reaching in there, poking that out, and you're flattening it along those existing creases. And then that's going to end up folding down like that, but we can go ahead and fold this edge to that crease before we do that. Just like so. Then fold that down. 
And now we're going to flatten it, folding from this point here into the point of the pocket, which you can see is that point to that point there. I know this is tricky. Awesome job if you've made it this far. You've done some wonderful work. And now, uh, I want you to see this point right here where this edge intersects with the top edge of this kind of layer right here. So that point right there, we're going to fold from that point toward this point right up here near where our nose is going to be. You can see that slope I've highlighted right where that intersects the top edge. Basically, I'm pointing the crease I make right to this point here. If you have thicker paper than I do, you might need to aim a little below that point so that your paper doesn't end up kind of rounding and hitting your center crease. You want a gap between this edge and the center crease for sure. And you want it to go right to this point back here because you'll see we're about to reverse this whole section, which is a little bit tricky, mind you. We're reversing this whole crease. And in order to do that neatly, you kind of have to reach behind and gently curl things into position, hold all your layers tightly together, and then tuck this into the pocket here. This is going to lock everything together nicely, just like that. And now we can open it up, and we wanna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm folding this, again I'm looking at this point here, I want it to mirror my other side. You can see I got a little closer to the center crease than I wanted, so I'm just going to pull that crease even a little tighter, just like that. Create just a little space between this edge and my center crease. I want the same on this side. And I want it to tuck tightly into that pocket, so I'm going right to that point there. And now I need to reverse all of those layers right along that crease. Just like that. We're getting really close at this point. I'm going to take a moment and fold my plane in half right along my center crease. And well, never mind. I'm uh, getting ahead of myself. So let's position it right here. And I want to gently fold right along this layer. I'm just kind of encouraging the paper into this position. I'm not even going to do much yet because I really don't want to crease along this. I don't want to crease into what is going to become that engine. I'm just kind of folding right along these layers just gently. We'll do more of that in just a second. And now we have another tricky step here where we're going to kind of pull the paper open and we need to fold along these creases here, this crease and this crease without tearing this little section right there. We need to be able to pop that inside out. And so I'm going to kind of massage the paper and wrinkle it with the whole goal of poking that and reversing that. So watch what happens here. Now I can fold along these layers and get back to having that short little edge of the tail fin there, just like this. I get that that's pretty tricky to do without tearing your paper. Just be careful as you do it. And now we're going to kind of push the slack into the engines, just like that on either side of the paper. So all the slack goes right into the engines and you can see them start to round out. And now what you'll need to do probably is you'll need to just gently curl the paper a little bit near these creases to get your engines to hold a little bit better and we can continue to work on that as we finish up the plane. But you want your engines to kind of hold their shape 
So you'll need to kind of push the bulb, just apply a little tension either way. Nicer paper than Kami actually holds this much better. So Kami is a little trickier to fold without kind of accidentally creasing these engines and making them look not as nice as they could. And now with the paper in this position, I'm again going to fold right here and I'm going to kind of by hand, gently holding this in my hand, gently continue that crease back on these layers without creasing the engine there. So again, I'm pulling this on all the layers right there. I want to continue that crease right back into those layers without creasing my engines. Looks like this. And now with the paper in this position, we can fold right from this corner here to the edge of the engine. Just like that. We'll do the same thing on this side. Edge of the engine to the point of the wing. and reverse those and tuck them in under these other layers on the bottom of the wing. Okay, oops. And now we're ready to start bringing everything together. So, as you fold your plane in half here, pop that section inside out, kind of reverse it along that most diagonal crease like this. And then you take this little internal flap and you're going to push it over along an existing crease and fold it to lock everything together. Just like that. And now you can see everything coming together here. And now we're going to fold this whole front section right along these thick layers here. And something you can do here is you can even kind of roll this in your thumb to really pull this right along the layer behind it. And you can see that will even slightly misalign these two layers instead of being perfectly symmetrical and lying on top of each other, you can see you start to see more white. That's actually good because it's going to give you a little more paper to now tuck the portion that goes past the layer behind it in behind that layer. And that's going to finish locking the nose together. So just that little section right here, I'm tucking it around and behind those layers to lock everything together. And then I can fold right along that existing crease on either side here. And you're going to need to kind of pinch everything together. Yeah, I know those are those flaps are coming undone. Try to pinch everything together without getting way back into the engines. I know this looks messy. Give me just a second to get the wings in the correct angle. And now we've got some kind of weird fiddly things to do, but just a few things to finish this up. So one thing you'll notice here as I tuck these back in is that this rear tail fin kind of wants to poke really wide on either side. And basically that's because this crease here and the same one on the other side are mountain folds. So I'm actually going to open this up just right along that into the point of my engine. I'm not making any new creases here and reverse that crease. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Just opening that up right along that layer or that crease rather, not making any new crease, just reversing that crease. And that will help this tail fin to lie more nicely. Man, these keep coming unfolded while I do other things. <laughs> um, so that's one thing you can do to help your plane look a little nicer, fly a little better. And then another thing we uh, definitely need to do is we've got these two on the bottom. You can leave them just as they are, but I like to kind of tuck one in going from the point where these layers are and folding this point as far up as it will go. 
I just fold it like that and then I wrap the other one right around it. And that'll be the section you hold as you throw the plane, just like this. And then finally, you can tune the plane just like this with no fins on the side, but it is much trickier. So I would recommend, well, you can try before you uh, fold fins because there's no harm in that. You can't undo the fins. Once you place fins, you're always going to have those creases. So you can try tuning it exactly as it is. You can kind of fan this open a little bit to create some dimensionality in the fuselage here. And then you can, yes, you can fold fins for the plane if you decide that you need them. So let's go ahead and just show you those fins are going to be just parallel to the center crease and not very big. So I'm just kind of looking at what I think is parallel. Just like that. And then once you do one side, you can just kind of book match them like this and fold your other side to match. Just like that. And now you have your fins. Now, as you'll notice, this can be a little finicky in holding its wing angles and everything and these locking together. Once you get everything nicely positioned, it's not too bad, but it will take a little work kind of folding these wings up, again, trying not to crush your engines. And then to get the back to hold together, you can see sometimes it wants to come unfolded like that. That's what kind of forcing this down gently without creating any creases, doing that's going to help a lot with that, creating that dimensionality at the back of the plane. Another thing to pay attention to is that these being open kind of forces this section of the wing down at the back, which might create a little downforce. So if you notice that your plane is diving, you can try to curl these a little more by pulling this together just like that. And that can help with that diving action. Of course, you can also bend the back edges up a little bit to create some up elevator, but I like to try that first and getting the two wings equal in the way they do that can be really important to getting this to fly well also. Uh, ideally, your wings are pretty flat across the back and your engines, again, the bottom point is flat between them in relation to the rest of the plane. So from here to here, you don't want one to be significantly lower. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you were successful in folding this plane. If you were, Good luck flying it. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. I'm now releasing a new tier where you can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos. So head over to patreon.com foldableflight and join the foldable fleet today.